Hey, it's Luke. As many of you know, the first DAW that I used really regularly was Reason. I started in version 2.5 and then I moved to Ableton. And even though I'm doing most of my work in Ableton Live now, I'm sort of in this weird limbo because I really like working in Reason. So you might be asking yourself the big question, is Reason still relevant today? And my answer is yes. Here are some reasons why. If you use it as a DAW, you might not have noticed this button here. If you click on an audio clip, there is a pitch edit button. I've been using Melodyne. There are a whole bunch of plugins that will do this, but Reason has it built in. So you can go, this is a vocal clip here. You can go and do all of your adjustments right in there. And uh, you don't have to go to an external plugin and do any transfers or anything going back and forth. You can make your changes. And then when you hit play, it's all done. It's actually really nice to have that in here. One thing they did that's just amazing, and I don't think any other DAW has done this, is that you can use their effects, their devices, their synths, all of that stuff in another DAW as a plugin. And that's just amazing because it happens so often that there's one effect that you love in one DAW. And then when you start working in another one, you just lose it. This one, you can take all of that stuff. They just put it all into one package and you can drop it in anywhere. And it's just so nice to be able to use. I especially like this one effect. We'll go to it right here. All right, I loaded up Ableton to be able to show you. I took this is just a nice sound in, in scenic. And uh, if you go to the effects, you basically go, and this thing has been in reason forever. I think I it was in there when I started using it like 20 years ago. And uh, it's the RV7000 Mark II reverb. But the preset I love in here is uh, called Film Score. And you can just, here, I'll we'll just bring the, the dry wet down a little bit. But it's just, it's probably my favorite reverb sound ever after all these years. I don't know what it is about it. It just sounds so nice. This is without it. It's just nothing. And then just makes it just so rich. It's just so nice to be able to take those effects, drop them in anywhere you're working, anything you're working on. It's great to have that available. The other thing I found interesting about this plugin is for everything it does, it actually isn't rough on your CPU. I was using this on a 12 year old Mac mini for a while and it worked fine. So it's actually really, uh, really nice. I, I don't know the way they were able to build this and fit so much functionality into this plugin is just, yeah, it, it, it's amazing. I really like this thing. Another thing that's interesting about reason is you can patch and wire stuff pretty well any way you want. So you can basically take this here you hit tab to see the cables on the back and you can start moving around like you can have the output here going into this uh into the spider audio and and then split the signal into a whole bunch of stuff send it a bunch of ways and and whatever there's there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do that can be a negative though because if you have a whole lot of tracks it can be tough to keep track of what you're doing, what you're working on and where things go, especially if it's a track you haven't worked on in a while. Sometimes you have to look and try to figure out where you send stuff because you can send stuff from, from anywhere to almost anywhere else. So uh, it can end up being a big spaghetti mess. But if you can get through that, it's really nice to be able to customize your sounds this much. All right, so we're back in Reason and there's one device in here that I just love 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 so much <laughs> if we take just a regular it's just a regular chord so i just just get rid of the metronome here it's just a very normal normal chord and then if we take this one this here the alligator i just love this effect so what it'll do it they they call it a, a triple filtered gate so basically if you don't know what a gate is, it's sort of like a, a gate in your backyard where if it's open, people can get through. And if it's closed, people can't get through. <laughs> and uh, it's the same type of thing with audio. So the gate will open to let audio through and, and then it'll close. What this does is it's basically opening and closing it, but doing it with a certain pattern. And it's doing some filtering at the same time. And it's basically doing three different gates uh, one for the low end, one for the high end, and one for the, the band pass or one for the, the mids, right? And uh, so we're taking this chord here, just listen to it again. And we're turning it into this. Okay. 
and it's just got this nice little sound where it's like cutting in and out. It's got the filtering going through. It's cutting it a little bit differently based on whichever frequencies they are. And uh, you can turn off the pattern and then just basically do this is the high end here. So you could map a button to the high and the, the mids and the lows and then and then just have it whichever whichever way you want. I love going with the patterns. And you can change the pattern here. I just noticed, I hadn't even know this is, noticed this before, but you can even have a little bit of a shuffle. And you can just change the presets and get completely different sounds from that same chord. Can get so many different sounds from it and it's just so nice to be able to use this so um, as soon as we change the instruments on here we'll have get completely different I uh, didn't like that one you can just imagine what you can use this with I haven't used it on vocals, but it could make some really interesting vocal sounds. And this effect just makes sounds that I haven't heard anywhere else. So uh, anyways, alligator, give it a try. It's a whole lot of fun. Another device I really like in here is the scales and chords. And a lot of DAWs will have their version of it, but there's some interesting stuff in here where if we just turn it off, I'm just gonna load a random preset on the monotone and uh, the same thing here on the baseline generator. So we've got some sounds like this. Actually, we'll try to find one that has a little bit more movement and more notes in it. All right, so you've got something like this where there's a whole lot of movement. But the thing is, if, you're working, if your track is in a certain key, you load this up and there's no way to set the key in here. So, what you can do is, let's say we're in, uh, I don't know, we'll do D flat minor. And so these notes are likely not going to be in D flat minor. And so as soon as you turn it on, it sounds a little bit weird. We've got to turn off the chords. That's what you got to remember. And we're playing the same thing. This is, this is normally. And this is bringing, bringing it into the key we're working in. So it's actually really nice to have that. You can go in there and change each of these notes and, and do all that. But if you don't know music theory or you're relatively new to it, or even if you're amazing at it and uh, you just want to work faster, going in there and changing each note is just going to take a whole lot of time. And it's just really nice to be able to do this. You you flip it over and you can also use it to, if it's at the beginning of your, your track, you can try out some different keys, see what, what, uh, what you want to do with your track. And then once you find one that works, you're able to build your track from there with uh, your new key. So it's just a really nice little simple device that uh, just makes things so much easier. There's another one I like here. It's near the top when you uh, go to effects and it's this Audiomatic Retro Transformer. And if we just take the same sound that we had, you can use it to get a lo-fi vibe. So um, I like this VHS. This sounds like an old radio. And I love the, the look of this thing. Like if you go to, to the old little transformer radio, you've got the, the image of it. It just looks nice and you can tell how, how much it changes the sound. And uh, it's just an interesting little plugin to, uh, to get a whole bunch of different sounds easily and, and get some, some inspiration. To ver and this is just on the bass lines. You can imagine it on a bunch of different tracks and trying either dif different effects or putting the same, same type of feel on a bunch of your tracks. Uh, it can make your, uh, your tracks really interesting. And there are a lot of lo-fi plugins, but uh, this one just has some some really nice sounds to it, and I just I just love the look of it. It just it's just fun to play around with. So uh, it definitely helps with inspiration, and uh, it's something that can really be a whole lot of fun. One of the things about Reason that's interesting is how many different devices deal with randomization and uh, things like like this beat map here where you're able to make some really interesting sounds. I tend to drop the kick out of it and use it for uh, for top loops. First of all, the look of it just 
makes you a little bit creative where you're moving stuff around. Um, and also you're able to, to just adjust stuff and get a whole bunch of different beats out of it, a whole bunch of different sounds. And uh, you're able to keep trying and trying until you find something that works and uh, then go with it. I like how many options there are for randomizing stuff. So when you run out of ideas, you know where to go. So another one I really love in here is this dual arpeggio. It's one of the most interesting arpeggiators I've ever used. So if we just have a very, very normal chord like this, if we turn this on, it can just make some really, really interesting sounds and did not like that. Here you can really hear what it's doing. And this sound without, it's just a very normal sounding, but you're able to get some really interesting patterns because they're both working together and you're able to shorten one of them while the other one's long. Like you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So it's really, really nice to have those two playing at the same time. And it's just a really interesting tool to have. So yeah, it's definitely still something that I use regularly. And actually, I think I'm going to go make a track with this right now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.